in the classic test here. Where should I begin when I'm starting at the end? Pursuing the higher aim, learning the meaning of every page. Ooh, where should I begin? Assalamu alaikum. Suna followers presents a new class, the Mukassid of Tafsir, being taught and brought to you by Ustada Leila Nashiba. Please stay tuned. Streaming on all major platforms, right here on channel Suna followers. Wa salat, wa salam ala, wa rasulullah. I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to our cl first class for today. And just to remind everybody that that commercial that we just played, uh, that will be tonight. Uh, we have Brother Muhammad Ziada. He will be back with us again tonight to discuss issues uh, pertaining to the children here in America, the Muslim children, you know, things that we can do uh, to safeguard their Islamic identity. So please make sure that you guys are here for his uh, lecture at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Any questions that you may have about uh, raising the kids in America and issues that relate to our, the youth here, you know, make sure you bring them. And he is a, uh, um, he is a law enforcement officer. So he'll be able to answer and advise you into different uh, 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 outlets we have available to help us, you know, uh, in uh, preserving the Muslim identity of our children here. And so for now, what we're going to do is get started on this class, which is the Mecosidic Tafsir. Remember, since we have Brother Muhammad Ziada back and he'll be teaching his lecture, he'll be giving his lecture every Tuesday at nine. What I've done is move the Mecosidic Tafsir class to 630. So that way you guys can still benefit. And when we speak about the Mechalcidic Tafsir, it's all about aiming high to try to understand or grasp the meaning of the Quran. And uh, when we met for this class, the last time, the last time that we met for this class, we spoke about uh, the importance of aiming high uh, and uh, to under uh, uh, with the Quran. And let me start us off with a quiz. I don't want to give away the answer that's why i had to pause let me put my little powerpoint up here oh wait a minute uh let me take this down again i forgot to click the okay this is the one i want okay inshallah you guys should be able to see this okay uh this is a question i have from last week we spoke about the higher aims of the Quran. The Quran has higher aims for us. And what do we mean when we speak about the Quran has within it many high aims for us? What are those high aims of the Quran? What am I referring to when I speak about the higher aims of the Quran? What are we referring to? What are the higher aims of the Quran? Can anyone answer that question? You should be teaching this to your children, teaching your children to try to grasp the higher aims of the Quran. And what do I mean when I say that? Teach your kids the higher aims of the Quran. Can anyone answer that question? I want to try to get us acquainted with it, with this term, this terminology, the higher aims. When I'm speaking about the higher aims of something, what am I speaking about? What do you think? Okay, I have to get some answers here. So let me open up my uh, 
Zoom room here and to start at the top and work our way down. When we speak about the higher aims of the Quran, what are we speaking about? What are the higher aims of the Quran? Sister Anissa, do you know? We should try to grasp the higher aims. What are what am I referring to? Sister Aya, Anissa, go ahead. I think the higher aims would are doing the extra things, like doing the extra mile of something. So um, not just doing your obligations, but doing um, the extra, the sunnah that that kind of beats it up. That might be considered the higher aims of prayer, but of an action such as making salat. But I want to know when we read the Quran, what are the higher aims of the Quran? What's the purpose? In other words, if I'm going to rephrase it, see, we're not used to hearing English used this way. I know we're Americans and Americans don't speak that way. You don't hear the term higher aim. <laughs> we don't speak. We're so much into hip hop. It ain't funny. Um, when I say higher aims, I'm speaking about the purpose of something. The most correct of it what is the purpose of the Quran why do you even read it what are you looking for when we read the Quran what do we read it for why do you read it why do you read the Quran who can answer why does anyone read the Quran what do you why, why do you read the Quran maybe you don't read it at all but why would a person read the Quran one of the reasons to read the Quran is to listen to the speech of Allah and to understand his goals that he has for us. Okay, see, Latifah's a teacher, so she's acquainted with this terminology. She probably tries to instill it in the youth, okay? Okay, good job. Okay, so, so when we say that we're reaching, what are the higher aims of the Quran? What are What is it about the What are the higher aims? Go ahead, Anissa. Yeah, it's an elevation. It helps to elevate your soul to help you to purify yourself more. Okay, but the okay. Closer to Allah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So a person would read the Quran to get closer to Allah. Okay. Uh Sister Yasmin, she typed here. She said, What are the higher aims of the Quran? She said to better understand what Allah wants you. Her English is bad here. To better understand why Allah wants us. Okay. To better understand why Allah wants us to know certain things. Or to follow certain guidelines that he set out for us. Okay, yeah, it's just you guys ain't wording it well. But, I, I okay. Sakina. She said, listen to the recitation of the Quran. Practice. The okay, but what's the purpose of it? You guys, are, uh, what's the purpose? What are you, hey, let me put it this way. Can I? Go can ahead. I say, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to say that I look at the Quran as being a blueprint of how I should navigate through this life. And it's a, a guide for me. That's the aim. What does the word aim mean? What am I reaching for? To aim for something is to reach for something, to search for something. And I want to know the higher refers to the best, the most correct, the most accurate. Good job, Layla. Latifah gave y'all a clue. Thank you, Latifah, for not giving them everything. Because she knows what higher aim means. When we say that of the higher aim, I want to walk or I want to read the Quran and have a better understanding as to what my purpose in life is. I want to know what's good and what's clean. I want to know what's lawful, what's unlawful. I want to be guided into becoming the best human being that I can be. 
um, I want to aim high and, and search and find solutions to any problems I may have. I want to aim high and understand how to handle and deal with the trials of life. Good job, Layla, as a blueprint. The Quran is a blueprint print for all of that. How I can live my life here on this earth and enjoy the good things that Allah put here for me while staying away from that which is detrimental to me. How to make the most of my life here on this earth and have a good ending after death. That's the higher aim. Aim is your goal. What are you looking for? What are we looking for? We talked in our Tawheed class about how uh, uh, Tawheed or Rububia, that's the Lordship of Allah. The Quran teaches us of the Lordship of Allah. So my, my higher aim is to get to know my Lord, to get to know his Lordship, to understand his Lordship correctly, to understand what it means to be, that, that he's the creator and the owner of everything. My aim is to understand what it means when Allah says that he's the provider, he's the sustainer. What it means when Allah says that everything good and bad comes from him. I am aiming high to get to know my Lord. Y'all get it? I'm aiming high to have a relationship with him that's going to be, that cause betterment for me in this world. We have to get in the habit of using English words better. We're so into the hip hop. So we hear the word higher aim, we're like, what does that mean? Aim, to reach, to search for something, to try to grasp something. High, I want to get the best, the most correct, the most accurate understanding. Do y'all understand now? Does everybody understand what it means to aim high? What's the higher aim of the Quran? The higher aim of the Quran is to give you that guidance give you that blueprint in life. Good job, Layla, again. Okay, how to live in this world and be successful without uh, invoking the anger or disappointment of Allah. Does that make sense to everybody? What do y'all think? Give me some feedback in that Zoom room. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense more sense yeah well you know yeah, yes, yeah yes. you knew the answer t for you started them off good job yeah we're gonna have to look at that's why i tell y'all you know when uh, the prophet said when we read the quran we have to ponder the meaning a lot of you are focusing on learning how to read the quran in arabic that's a nice thing but y'all better learn the meaning of these english words you know, you can recite the Quran all day and all night. It ain't going to be no benefit to you if you don't understand what you're saying. You have to read the interpretation of the meaning and have a dictionary, an English dictionary with you. Because this, the we're not used to hearing this, these words used this way. English is the most slangish language and it changes every day. So we have to keep a dictionary. We have to have an Urban Dictionary and we have to have a Webster's. Oh, yeah, because there's Urban English, Urban slang that we use. We, we, we use Urban slang. So that's why they have developed an Urban Slang Dictionary. You can Google it. So we need to have a copy of the Urban Slang Dictionary and a regular Webster's for American English, because we don't understand when we put words like higher aim together, what that means. Okay, so this is what we've been speaking about. We spoke about last week, how the Quran is the speech of Allah, as Latifah say. These are the, the words of Allah sent to us through the Prophet Muhammad, telling us how to live our life here on this earth to the best of our ability without bringing about his anger, his punishment. That's the aim of the Quran. 
to be a guide, a lantern for us so we can come out winners in the long run. And so today we're going to continue this examples as to how the Quran brings about great aims for us. Well, the Quran is a reformer, a full reformer of behavior. By reading the Quran, by pondering the words of Allah, pondering what he's saying to us, we can change our lives to that which is best for us. And that's what reformation is. Reformation is to change or make better the condition of yourself. Remember, Allah tells us in the Quran that he will never change the condition of a people, nor will he change the condition of a person until that people or that person takes the steps to change himself. That's Islam. That's reformation. A lot of Muslims want the war to go away. We want the war against Islam to go away. You can protest. You can boycott to hell freezes over literally, but it's not going to go away until we make the change to change the condition of ourselves. Okay, so change to reformation is needed for us. And how do we change the condition of ourselves as Muslims? The only way that you can change the condition of yourself is through your belief system, your aqeedah. Allah tells us that in the Quran too. Whenever our aqeedah is corrupted, whenever our belief system is corrupted, that's when he sends calamities to us. That's when he sends reper repercussions and punishment to us. So by reading the Quran, by pondering the meaning and aiming high, reaching high to grasp the understanding of Allah's words, you can bring about change within yourself. And in turn, that's when Allah will take the steps to help change your condition. Does everybody understand that? So reformation, it means to make things right. And it's the opposite meaning of self-defeat. It's the opposite meaning of being stagnant or committing what we're going to speak about in another class, Shirk El Eshkar. What is Shirk El Eshkar? This is association because you're discontent with the decree of Allah. Like the Muslims are today, you're discontent with Allah's decree. He sent the war. This is his Carter. What are you doing to change yourself? If we don't change ourselves, which by the way, we're not going to change. Okay, this war is going to continue to spread until it becomes the war against Islam, which it already really is, and it's going to impact the entire earth. It's one of the greater signs of the last hour. One of the first of the greater signs of the last hour. We're at that step now. Why? Because we have not made reformation. We did not change or make better our conditions here on earth. So if we read the Quran, the Quran focuses on reforming your belief. And when you read about how uh, 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 Allah teaches us to reform our belief system, you look around and see that society, man's beliefs are corrupted. Man's laws are nothing compared to Allah's laws. Remember, that's another one of the uh, branches of Tawheed or Rububia. Allah is the absolute ruler. Allah is the absolute legislator. Only His laws are all just, all good and fair. There's no defect in his laws. But man makes laws all the time. Democracy is a defect. Why is democracy a defect? 
because it's based on the majority rule. And the majority rule may be ignorant. The majority rule may be peasants. They may be people of, 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 of criminal behavior. And you're allowing them to make decisions and laws for everyone else. A law doesn't function that way. Okay, he's the absolute ruler, the absolute legislator. So the Quran stands as a reformation for people, how to guide us to the right path, how to bring us from out, from, from out of the shadows of darkness to the shadows of light. But how many of us make use of the Quran that way? Like I said, we can't even understand the simple English words. So you know you don't understand what you're saying in Arabic because that ain't even your language. Y'all better get some dictionaries. Make use of them. Okay. And when we talk about reformation, okay, I'm going to make this bigger too so y'all can see better that it in my picture. When we talk about reformation or changing the condition of ourselves, you know, change can come uh, from a higher level uh, based on one particular thing or many things combined together. For example, when you want to know about the lordship of Allah, okay, you read the Quran and Allah speaks to us of his lordship, his divinity, his oneness. So you can pick one particular subject like that and change your belief system just by pondering the words of Allah. Or, for example, uh, you just need knowledge about him. You need to get to know how his cotter works. A lot of Muslims don't understand the cotter of Allah. They don't understand how uh, everything that happens, it happens because he willed it. So if you, you can just make that a, a, a topic and, and learn about that, or you can uh, uh, learn about different things all at once. You want guidance. You want to be guided as to how to be strong, how to be a strong believer and not a weak one. I want to be guided as to how to be a good wife, a good mother, and a good leader for my family. So you can see guidance of, of different types instead of just one. And also you want to learn how to be more conscientious of your Lord. Or you can make a category of just, you know, learning about the love of Allah and how to fear his punishment and how to have hope of his mercy. Or you can just pick a topic of sincerity and supplication so as you can see guys uh subcategories of reformation can be focused on if you're aiming high to try to really grasp the words of Allah and understand what he's saying to us you can pick many topics combine them together or just one to focus on Either way, Allah, Allah, Allah's words, which are the Quran, will help to reform your belief system. And not only does the Quran reform a person's belief system, but it also can promote good character, good behavior. When you convert to Islam, this is a change. You are a convert. You're not a revert. Convert means to embrace a new lifestyle, a new ideology, a new belief system. So you are a convert. You're changing your lifestyle. You're changing your belief system. You're going to change your character, your behavior. Well, the guidance in that is from the Quran, subhanahu Allah. And this is one of the major higher aims of the Quran. It helps us to develop and enhance good character. You know to stop smoking, stop doing drugs, stop drinking, stop fornicating, stop adulterating, not to lie, not to steal not to cheat people, 
not to kill people, not to hurt people, to be kind even to an animal, to be kind even to a lost earth. So the Quran, the Mechocytic nature of the Quran is, so because it's the law's words, Allah demonstrates to us moral virtues and good character. For example, Allah speaks to us in the Quran about Prophet Abraham, how Prophet Abraham, may Allah be pleased with him, said, O oh Allah, send among them a messenger from themselves who will recite to them your words and teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. Indeed, you are the one might. You are the one wise. So here you can see. You know, you want a person to teach you, uh, you want to learn good virtues, good morals, good humanity and morality. That's all through the words of Allah, the Quran. You reach high. You reach high to grasp what good character is. How Allah defines good character, not how man does. How Allah defines what's good and clean, not what man does. And I have to tell you, sisters, this all the time. Don't listen to these brothers when they're sitting around throwing the word haram out to you, telling you it's haram to wear makeup. It's haram to show your face. It's haram to be beautiful. And they have nothing from the Quran to back it up. Only Allah has that authority to make things lawful and unlawful. And the things that he doesn't mention are all good and clean. And we don't need science to try to change that. Allah doesn't mention anything about makeup. So that means it's good and clean. It's lawful. Allah doesn't say that women are, have to be slovenly. So who are you to say I have to be? So again, guys, the Quran, these are the words of Allah. This is Allah's speech, and he promotes good character. And even our prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember uh, the, the hadiths are the explanation of the Quran. And the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has told us in numerous hadiths that he was sent to teach us good character and good morality and by teaching us good character and good morality in turn he taught us islam which is submission to allah so the quran is the speech of allah the words of allah not his creation it's his words don't get it twisted the quran is not the creation of allah it's the words of allah his speech telling us how to reform and, or change the condition of ourselves to that which is good and clean and how to change our character and promote good values and all of that. And this too, uh, you can uh, pick comes along with, with subcategories. For examples, you can focus on morality or different types of character. What's good character? What's defined as bad character? You can read the Quran and learn about the dangers of ignorance. Allah hates ignorance. That's why Allah made seeking knowledge an obligation upon every Muslim, male and female. Every one of us is supposed to learn this religion. We're supposed to know the basics. We're supposed to know Aqida. We're supposed to know what the lawful and the unlawful are. We're supposed to know how to perform our obligations to Allah. And Allah is not, you can't blame it on your parents. Allah will hold them accountable for what you did before puberty. But after you become puberty, Allah is holding you accountable for not seeking the correct knowledge and understanding of this religion. Okay? You can also focus on community building. You know, how to develop a strong brotherhood, tarbiya, how to establish a good sisterhood uh, with the Muslims in your community. So again, guys, the Quran, Mecca Siddiq, the Quran is Mecca, Mecca, Siddiq, you know, 
You can aim high, reach high to change, to get the understanding, to change yourself to that which is pleasing to Allah. And also, as we talked about, this is all Tawheed or Rububia. Now do you guys see? Well, I told you guys, I don't break um, Tawheed up in the categories because my Dao is for you, Muslims. I My Dao is geared to Muslims. I don't debate with Kafirs. I'm not into that. And I focus on Tawheed or Rububia because this is what most Muslims have a hard time understanding, the Lordship of Allah. Most Muslims have a hard time understanding that Allah is also the source of legislation. This is another one of the higher aims of the Quran. Okay? Allah's laws. That's Sharia. Sharia is an Arabic word that means in English the laws of Allah. Allah's laws cannot be changed. Allah's laws cannot be tweaked. We cannot say because we live in a non-Muslim country that we can tweak the laws of Allah. We cannot say because we live in America and America has made it legal for same-sex marriages that we can tweak the laws that Allah made about same-sex relationships and instead of us doing El Bara, because the law tells us to do El Bara, which is to distance ourselves from those laws, those rules that contradict Islam. But instead of us Muslims today abiding by Allah's laws like the companions did, when the companions migrated to Abyssinia, Abyssinia was not a Muslim land. It was a land of the infidels. Okay? Yes, it was. It was a Christian land. When some of them migrated to Yemen, it was a land of the infidels too. But did the Prophet Muhammad tell them, because you're in the land of the infidels, you can tweak his laws? What did the prophet tell Muad? You're going to the land where people deal in usury. You stay away from it, even if that means you're the only person in that country that doesn't do it. You do El Bara, which is distance ourselves. But today, 2024, we got men and women here in America calling themselves scholars. They think that because this is the land of the infidel, they can tweak Allah's laws and say, we're not going to do El Bara. We're just going to set boundaries. I'm not going to throw, a, a throw um, tell my brother who's a homo. I'm, my brother is LGBTQ. I'm not going to tell my brother to stay away from my family because this is an infidel land. Instead, I'm going to let my brother come around me, but I'm going to tell him, just don't bring your boyfriend. That's not Islam. Did the prophet tell the companions that? He said, no, you do El Bara. So this is an example. You know, Allah's laws, the Quran is the source of legislation. And you cannot tweak it. You cannot change Allah's laws. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. And we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book and truth, confirming that which came before it and as a criterion over what came before it. So judge between the people by what Allah has revealed and do not follow their inclinations away from what has come to you of the truth. This verse of the Quran has not changed. This verse of the Quran is not abrogated. And this is what Layla Nasheba says to all those men and women in America who think they're scholars when they're not, who think that because you're in the land of the infidel, you can change and tweak Allah's laws. You can. Here's the Dalil. You don't do that. Listen to what Ibn Ashir, one of the um, early scholars said. He said, the objective of the Islamic legislative law is to establish a strong community 
with a stable social system and promote the orderly functioning of its affairs by achieving its welfare and preventing evil. We don't allow society's evil to cause us to tweak and change the laws of Allah. Instead, we're supposed to change society. We're supposed to take the laws of Allah and act upon them in our communities and publicly and let the other people know we have no parts in that evil that you're doing. We are the reformers. The Muslims are supposed to be the reformers of society, not the blend in people. And that's why Allah is sending all these calamities to America as we speak with all these natural calamities of hurricanes and earthquakes and disasters. Allah is trying to tell you, brothers, you better jump back. You better stop allowing society to corrupt you. Subhana Allah. So the Quran is a source of legislation. Also, the Quran as a legal source also aims to achieve the welfare and prevent evil through the clarification and its updates of many truths that have been omitted. Allah destroyed a whole nation of people. LGBTQ ain't new. People been doing that filthy disease since Allah made Adam and Eve. It ain't new. Allah speaks about that in many verses of the Quran. Look at the people of Lot. He destroyed an entire nation for that filthy stuff. This ain't nothing new. It's our job to achieve the, and prevent, to achieve welfare and prevent evil through the clarification of the laws of Allah, not sit there and tweak Allah's laws to accommodate society. Does everybody understand that? And that's why we have to be careful of interfaith here in America. Living in America, living in a Western country, we have this thing called interfaith. And there is no interfaith in Islam. We do not worship the same creator. We do not believe in the same things either. So we can never sit down together and be brethren unto each other. But this is what happens when you sit there and disobey Allah and you take the non-believers as your friends, as your companions. Allah says they will never have your interests at heart. Their aim, is, their aim is to destroy you. So we have to guard against this interfaith, you know, because it's destroying, it's destroying the Muslim identity here in the West. And it's causing us to deviate away from Allah's laws and Allah's commands. And again, as the law tells us, whenever we deviate away from his laws and commands, he will send war. He will send earthquakes. He will send hurricanes. He will send tornadoes. And look where those tornadoes, look where those hurricanes, look at where those earthquakes are occurring, right there in the heart of the people that think that they can tweak Allah's laws. And even when we deal with le the legal aims of the Quran, subcategories can, uh, can, uh, can be used. For example, the connection between creating and governing, the wisdom behind Allah's rules, the aims of Allah's laws, the gra gradation of his rulings, the necessities and by the way this is a big topic here in america for those of you brothers listen to me in the other in the east yeah the american brothers and sisters here who call themselves scholars when they ain't none of them are scholars ain't they, they ain't no scholars but they think they are 
They're trying to uh, take a law's laws and tweak them with the necessities and the non the essentials and non essentials. They want to take the laws of a law and put them in different categories, two categories the essential laws that we have to abide by, and they say that that falls in the heading of Akita, such as only worship a law. And then the non-essentials that we don't have to abide by because we live in a non-Muslim country. For example, the intermingling. Women and men can intermingle together. That's why they have women sitting on the executive boards of massages. The men and women praying side by side in some of the massages. They even got female imams. They call them a, a spiritual guide guiders, but they are these female imams in the massages. All kind of crazy stuff. And now we got transgendering. Oh yeah. We allowing they allowing transgenders into the masjids, transgenders on their board, and all this other filth. And they're saying that they can do it because there's we live in a land of the infidel and there's essentials that we have to abide by of Allah's laws and non-essentials. All of this is garbage. All of this is garbage. And all of this is why Allah is doing exactly what he's doing, sending calamity after calamity after calamity.